So given that my VMware videos have generated a fair amount of excitement and interest in the community, I thought it was a good time to do somewhat of a Q&A slash FAQ video on VMware and specifically gaming in VMware. I've compiled a list of common questions I've seen in my comments and also some questions that people have PM'd me and a couple things that came up in my recent interview in X Penguin. Thanks Hex and Pseudo and let's get rolling. So the first most common question I see, and it's actually not really a question at all, it is, I didn't know you could play games in a VM, or I didn't know that a virtual machine is capable of this. Well, it absolutely is, and the funny thing is that virtual machines have been capable of this pretty much the entire time. So to delve a little deeper into this, it helps to understand the difference between a hypervisor and a virtual machine. So a virtual machine is exactly what it sounds like. It is a virtualized machine running inside of another machine. A hypervisor, on the other hand, is something that manages the virtual machine. Now there's a difference between a Type 1 and a Type 2 hypervisor. Both VirtualBox and VMware are Type 2 hypervisors. It means that they're hosted on an operating system. A Type 1 hypervisor, like KVM, Zen, or Hyper-V, runs in such a way that it has direct access to the hardware. It doesn't necessarily have to negotiate with the operating system for the access. So as such, Type 1 hypervisors are typically faster depending on the use case. Now the next part to this question is why not use VirtualBox or VMware versus VirtualBox? Now the biggest difference is the use case. VirtualBox is meant for lightweight workloads basically being able to spend very small, lightweight virtual machines in many of them, sometimes in parallel, and not really a whole lot else. So a lot of people use VirtualBox for distro reviews, and I think that's a really good use case. VirtualBox is also commonly used in development, such as Vagrant, and I've done videos on Vagrant. But in general, VirtualBox just does not have the same amount of power or functionality that VMware does. So looking at the VMware settings, just take a look at storage. So with hard drive, you can defragment the disk, you can expand it, compact it, there's all this disk information. With VirtualBox, there's none of that. You can't even expand it. Now, yes, there is a way to manipulate the disk, but you certainly can't do it from the GUI here. And likewise, when you go to the display section, you'll see that you cannot increase the maximum amount of memory out of VirtualBox further than 128 megabytes. Now, that's not to say that VirtualBox isn't capable of 3D acceleration. I've opened up DirectX Diag Tool just so you can see kind of what Windows thinks is going on. So if we go to the display section on both, you'll see on VMware, no problems found to test this, to test that. On the other side, Windows is not a fan of the VirtualBox driver. So I'll go ahead and run these tests and fast forward and you can kind of see what the results are. So here are the results of the test. On the VMware side, no problems found, direct draw, DX7, 8, 9, everything was successful. On VirtualBox side, it still doesn't like the driver, DirectDraw was fine, DirectX 7 failed, DirectX 8 and 9 both passed. Now the interesting thing about the actual device is if we look at the DAC type, it says integrated RAM DAC, and approximate memory is 128. If we go to the VMware side, the DAC type is VMware SVGA2, but the total memory is 128. Now if you remember looking at the display section, our memory is 512, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. So the second most commonly asked question is, why not just use Wine? And that question is actually pretty simple. I'll go ahead and demonstrate with Steam here. So here's Steam, it's on VirtualBox, and I haven't actually tested any of the games, but here is Steam. So let's go to the store. And here's the store. Community, and here's Community, Profile. So here are all these tabs. And let's go to Steam. This is running in Wine. So let's go to the store. Nothing. Let's go to Community. Nothing. Profile? Nothing. So why is that? Well, that's because the UI web elements don't work in the Steam browser. So they didn't test game purchasing or anything. So there is a workaround, but the point is that not everything works straight out the box with Wine. And I know you could say, well, that's a relatively small thing. I don't know if that necessitates spinning up an entire virtual machine. Well, the most recent video I did was playing Paladins in a VM. And you know what? The game doesn't even run. And the game doesn't run because the new anti-cheat thing that they plugged into Paladins, which is very similar to the same issue that Planetside has. So if you wanted to play Paladins right now, as of December 10th, this was tested on December 2nd. It doesn't work. The game simply doesn't work in Wine right now, according to these results. In a virtual machine, it runs perfectly fine. Wine doesn't even fully support DirectX 9. I know that there's a lot of talk about Wine eventually supporting DirectX 11, but this is DirectX 9 implementation. Those numbers are not 100%. 
Now, you could look at DirectX 10 implementation, and it's actually going pretty well, but I don't know why they haven't fully implemented DirectX 9. If you play games on Wine, you'll notice that you oftentimes have to override games that use DirectX 9 with native DLLs. This is why. And then the final thing to talk about with Wine is that not all games in Wine run multi-threading. Now this is a problem because a lot of games are written in such a way to take advantage of multiple cores and multiple threads in your CPU. There's this lengthy article on the Wine docs that talks about why it's difficult to implement multi-threading. And in some cases it works just fine, in other cases you get one core or one thread and the game performance sucks because of it. The third question I commonly see is what about PCI pass-through? Now if you're asking a question about PCI pass-through, I'm going to assume that you already know what it is. And in practice, PCI pass-through is superior to a traditional Type 2 hypervisor because you're running on a Type 1 hypervisor, which means you have direct access to your hardware, and that also means that you have an extra GPU that your guest operating system can run with. Now, PCI pass-through is just fine. I'm not personally interested in it because I'm not convinced that the amount of work it requires to configure and set up PCI pass-through correctly is really worth the gains. I mean, PCI pass-through is a huge endeavor. You need a second GPU, you need a kernel that is specifically meant for doing PCI pass-through in either Zen or KVM, which also means if you're using a rolling release or you compiled your kernel like in Gentoo or something, you gotta be careful of kernel updates. There's a huge amount of configuration that goes into it. And then sometimes the KVM guests don't take advantage of the extra cores that your processor has. And what's more, KVM can't actually adjust the CPU frequency on its own. And then the guest operating system has to work well with, I mean, you see where this is going. It's very complex and error prone. And while it is possible, there are videos of people doing it. If it's really that necessary to run your Windows games, just dual boot or build another computer because you have to have an extra GPU anyway. Question number four is kind of around which version of Windows is better, or if there is a version of Windows, Windows 10, 7, whatever, better than any other version. Now before I answer this question, it's worth pointing out that if you're going to do this, you pretty much have to have a licensed version of Windows. Now, yes, you can just continue to reinstall Windows, or if you have the ability to take snapshots and keep rolling back every time Windows detects that you don't have a legitimate version or you haven't registered your legitimate version for whatever reason, it's best just to use a legitimate version of Windows and be done with it. It's also worth pointing out that Windows 10 is aware that it's being virtualized. So if you go into your task manager and go to performance, you'll see in the bottom section there are four virtual processors and the virtual machine field is yes. I believe that starting with Windows 7 or 8, Windows became virtual machine aware. In other words, it knows that it's running inside of a virtual machine. So to try to figure out which version of Windows runs best in VMware, I didn't want to delve too far into a full-blown benchmark, but instead I used 3D Mark 06 and just take a look at the scores. This is Windows 10, 11,628. This is Windows XP, 4,676. And the fifth question in the list is, what is my GPU and what is my display driver? So my GPU is an NVIDIA 750Ti. I've been using that for some time. I had a Radeon R7 360, but it has actually recently died. I tried to test it a couple days ago and discovered that the GPU was dead. So previously when I tried to use that card with the open source drivers, I would get an error or maybe it was a warning from VMware saying that my display drivers weren't supported. Now, given that those were the open source display drivers, I'm not really surprised. However, since you're asking me, I would strongly recommend using the proprietary drivers, specifically Nvidia if you have that option. I'm sure that the AMD GPU Pro drivers would work fine if you had an AMD card, but if you're going to try the open source drivers, just assume that you're going to get worse performance because VMware doesn't officially support those drivers. And lastly, the sixth most commonly asked question is will I play Overwatch? Or rather, is Overwatch supported in a VM? Uh, the answer is unfortunately no because VMware only supports DirectX 10. DirectX 10, not 10.1. Battlefield 3 and 4 and pretty much any modern game supports DirectX 10.1. I'm not really sure what the difference between 10 and 10.1 is, but apparently it's big enough. So until VMware supports DirectX 10.1, can't play Overwatch, can't play Battlefield 3 or 4, and you get the idea. So that's going to wrap this video up. I hope that I answered some of your questions. I'm going to do more videos like the Paladins video I did yesterday. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching.